What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the PG Sports Now show here from the Post-Gazette. I'm Brian Batko. We're going to have a fun conversation here coming up with former Steelers cornerback Ike Taylor on his way to Latrobe as we're going to do this. But first, a word from Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. There's no better place to get new windows and doors installed in your home than Pella, who can help you save on energy costs year-round. Schedule a free in-home consultation with your local Pella Windows and Doors to find the right product for your home and budget. Give us a call at 866-593-1560 to discuss your project further. That's 866-593-1560 to get started on planning your new windows and doors installation with Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. Uh, Ike, you were just telling me you got off the plane. You're en route to Latrobe as we speak. It's an off day for the Steelers, travel day for you. Uh, how excited are you to get out there and you know, to check out the first practice in pads on Tuesday? Because that's that's when the fun really cranks up, isn't it? Yeah, you know, when the pads come on, you know what time it is. Personalities come out, uh, testosterone level go high. Uh, everybody got a chip on their shoulder. I mean, this is football. You know, you got to you gotta do what you got to do when it comes down to, like, the helmets and uh, shoulder pads or some kind of pads on your shoulders. But when we go full pads, it's like a light switch just click on for your mind. Like, it's go time because that's all you know. So I can't wait to be honest with you. Is there somebody in particular that you are most looking forward to getting your eyes on this year at, at Latrobe? I know you've been up there in, in past years. What's what's new? What's fresh? What's kind of the most on your radar for 2023 camp? Oh, man. Ain't, ain't really nobody. I'm actually looking for a sleeper. Okay. Like, I always I, I always look for a dude who can help who can help out, help the team that nobody talking about. And from training camp to – Okay, like week eight, so and so gonna be able to help the team. They're gonna come in, they're gonna get some reps, and they're gonna able to help, they're gonna be able to help the team. So I'm always looking for a sleeper. Um what what's expected is expected of the people um I have in mind on what they need to do around what time, but the unexpected is is something I'm always looking for, like a sleeper on on the team in general. All right, that's a that's a scout's eyes perspective for sure. I mean, and I was gonna ask you, like what what is your official role, I guess, at this point with the Steelers? I know you've dabbled in some scouting. You've got a great relationship with Omar Khan. We've, we've seen you around the facility from time to time in season, not just out here uh, in, at camp in, in Latrobe. What can you tell me about sort of what you're doing right now for the team and, and for the front office? Um, well, well, you know, right now I'm on the college side, so I'm into the college scouting. So right now I actually got to go see Omar and Dan Colbert and Coach T to see exactly what they want. Uh, me to do because this year is like my official year last year um they gave me opportunity to, to see what I can do they love what I do so this year like my first official year on on being a legit Pittsburgh still a scout so um right now this is exactly what I'm doing as soon as I get out the phone with you going to the troll talk to the bosses see exactly what they want me to do and I'll take it from there that's awesome. So the future of the, the Steelers is is in your hands to some extent once you get out there on the road and and start uh you know getting your eyes and some hands on some young guys. But let's talk about the uh the current team. I guess we'll start with the news of the weekend. Quan Alexander signing a one year deal with the Steelers. You know, he started off at LSU, played for the Bucks, Niners, Saints, Jets. So he's bounced around a lot. What's your take, Ike, on, on what the Steelers are getting with him at inside backer? Just just personality at the inside linebacker. Um some a, a bully at the inside linebacker. That's that's when you think of inside linebacker, you think of Pittsburgh. Um, you think of bullies, and that's the only time you really want somebody to be a bully in this world is at that inside linebacker position in the NFL. And that's exactly what Quan is. Quan is a certified bully. Um, somebody who can who not lead um really with the talking, but lead with actions. And that's all been Quan. That's all Quan been doing. Since he got into the league, he's a tough physical uh, athlete who's very aware on what's going on, especially situational football. He just so happened to be a Pittsburgh still, and he's just so happened to play an old school style of ball, which is bully ball. So uh, I'm glad we got Quan. Quan is glad he's here. So we'll take it from there. That was a big move by by Omar a few days into camp for sure. Um, you know, sometimes you know, that that wasn't always the aggressive approach that we'd see from the Steelers at this time of year. Is that, has Omar done anything that surprised you so far in his 14 months as the GM since replacing Kevin Colbert? Man, everything Omar doing right now surprises me. Um, 
<laughs> he, he's because he he's going so unorthodox. All Omar, our Omar know is how that locker room should look and what that personnel and that roster should look like because he's been around for the Super Bowls. So for me, my personal opinion, I think O just relapsing on what he knows that locker room, that roster, that personnel should look like when you're trying to win Super Bowls because he's been there 23 years and he's been through every process of it. So Omar getting a job last year, um, uh, uh, a dream job for O, and you can tell he couldn't wait for this moment. Um, and that's being a GM for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he had to wait a long time, damn near 20 years. But at the same time, um, O has just worked his ass off. And right now he's so strategic at what he's doing, but he understands because he saw he was here when we was winning. Um, he was a contract guy. And at the same time, you're getting a lot of one. So say with Omar, you're getting a guy who has countless years, countless hours of doing contracts and countless years sitting under, you know, the great Kevin Colbert, Hall of Fame Kevin Colbert I see. And, and hours on on understanding what it is to be a Pittsburgh Steelers with the Roonies. And hours on what it is to have a relationship with head coaches, whether it's Coach Kyle Hall of Fame and future Hall of Fame and Mike Tomlin. So, oh, been around. Like, oh, oh, is seasoned very well when you want to talk about being a GM. He just haven't had that GM title. So this this is nothing new for O. When you say unorthodox, I kind of think of how many vets with, who have had success that they've brought in just this offseason. I mean, we, we mentioned Quan. He's played in the Super Bowl. Landon Roberts has won a couple of them with the Patriots. Isaac Sayamalo was just there last year with the Eagles. Um, Allen Robinson has been around. Pat P is a future gold jacket guy probably. Is, is that what you mean when you say you've kind of seen a difference in – how they're going about building this roster. Cause it's, it's not typical that you look at the longest tenured players on a Steelers team. And most of them are not homegrown guys. They've, they've come in from other organizations and, you know, ideally they know what it takes to win. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. When, when you talk about Pittsburgh Steelers, you're talking about draft picks. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not talking about uh, free agents or outside guys you might get a few, yeah. but not this heavy, not this aggressive in the off season on how you want to build your roster. So that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, going on orthodox with his style, with his style of being a GM, um, especially for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, we usually, when you think Pittsburgh Steelers, you think, okay, drive picks. Um, might get a few here and there on the outside, but they got to be able to fit that locker room. Oh, doing a little bit of both. Um, we're going we're gonna to load up on these drive picks and we're going to load up on the free agency. So I'm looking at it like, if O is loading up on, on the free agents, he'd like to help this roster. It's been some guys that they've been liking for a long time in the NFL. They just couldn't put their hands on them because situational-wise and probably only get seven, eight picks for the draft, depending on how good or bad you do. So that's that's all, that's that's how I'm looking at it, um, Brian, from my standpoint. If we're doing all this, they've been having these guys on the radar. Um, at the time, they probably couldn't get them or, could, or, or didn't need them. But now is the time, and that's why they're so aggressive. All right, let's talk about one of those guys, specifically at your position, Patrick Peterson. Uh, he's he's 33. I know that's just a number. I mean, especially for a guy who's a, a physical marvel like him and has just been a different kind of athlete his whole life. But can you can you trust a 33-year-old corner to, to play a lot of man coverage in the NFL in 2023 with the way these – receivers are running routes now with how fast and big and, and physical these guys are. Do you, do you think that they can still trust Pat P to do that at this stage of his career? Yeah, you're talking about a savvy future Hall of Fame um, cornerback. And, 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 and some people, you don't look at, you don't, you don't look at age for a lot of people. Like we, we, we tend to look at age, but we ain't looking at the savvy veteran Oh, I know what play you about to run. If I know what route you're about to run, dealing off of formations because I've been in the league for so long, I don't care how fast you are. I'm going to beat you there anyway. And you get people a head don't start. understand that the athlete Pat P is. So Pat P, I've been knowing Pat P. I've been training with Pat P since he was in high school with BMAC, with Brian McFadden. He used to bring him down to Coach Shaw in Orlando. So the athlete that he is, he's going to forever be an athlete. 33 years old, you're not going to be able to move the way you used to move at 33 
and 23. So I get that part. But at the same time, you're talking about a, a, a savvy veteran guy who can play everywhere in the secondary. So you get these young dudes that can't play everywhere. So I can't, I'm, I'm not going to ask JP Jr. to play nickel, safety, and corner. Because right now he's not ready for it. He got to lock in on one position. Who can I ask? I can't ask a Minka. I can't ask a Pat Pete to do these things. So when you bring in that kind of veteran leadership, you're not looking at athleticism. You're you're looking at, okay, how can he help or be one of the coaches on the field along with Minka? So you bring it, you bring it in his presence. You bring it in his his high football IQ. Um you throw you, you throw a lot of things out of the window. So that's 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 how people a older guy, you know what you're getting. A younger guy, you know what you're getting. I can't ask JP to do what Pat Pete do. I can't ask Pat Pete to do what JP do. They both, they both, at some form or fashion, gotta uh, complement each other. And how Pat Pete will complement the secondary is the same way when we got Joe Hayden, a, a, a older, savvy, veteran guy who can still make plays regardless on the age, who can help out the young guys. So I mean, it's perfect. That's that's what Deshae Townsend did for us when I came in. Deshae Townsend was an eight, nine year veteran guy. Couldn't run like how he used to run. But it's football IQ on the field. Um, for him, for Coach LeBeau to tell Deshae in that secondary or just on the defense in general, Shay, you make all the third down calls on the field. Like it, it, it says a lot. So I, I, I just think a lot of people get caught up in height, size, and speed. But man, it's priceless when you it's priceless when you had that veteran le- leadership. You know, when you talk about a future gold jacket sitting in that secondary, like a lot of these guys between Trice and JP, a lot of these guys watch um, um, Pat Pete in college and in the NFL. So he's like he's like an idol to him. So when you got a guy sitting in that room with you on the practice field with you, everything he's telling telling me, I'm listening to. So um, that's 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 how we look at it from a player standpoint. We don't look at uh, how old a person is. Like if they're bringing this person in, it's a reason why. And once they bring him in and you see why you're like, okay. as a coach, when you have a guy like Pat P, he makes your job easier as a rookie. When you have a guy like Pat P, he makes your job easier as a head coach. When you have a guy like Pat P, he makes your job easier. So. When you get veteran guys like this starting to come on the team, they know how to be professionals. You know, the stage ain't too big for them. They just so happen at a particular point in time, um, there weren't, they wasn't a Pittsburgh stiller, but obviously, like I said before, B, they was probably on the radar. So bringing veteran guys in is always good for a roster, especially when your roster is super young. Now, other than the veteran guys, we still have a young, a young roster. So we got yeah. a good mix to be to be honest with you on this roster B. That makes sense. Um, you talk, you talked me into it there to an extent there, Ike. Um, you know, let's stick with corners on this team for a second. Cause you know, you mentioned the vet in Pat P mentioned the, the young guys and we'll, we'll get to them, especially Joey Porter jr. But why do people sleep on Levi Wallace? I really like Levi Wallace. I like him off the field in the locker room. I think his game's underrated. Do we need to put a little bit more respect on Levi Wallace or even bring it up? A lot the of respect guys? on Levi. See, here's the problem. I, I look at Levi like Will Gay. Like, Will Gay won't go wild you with no 4-2, no 4-3 speed. You know, probably when he came out, when he was training for the fourth. Levi the same way. Levi ain't going to wow you with no with no 4-4, 4-3 speed. But, hell, Levi was damn near one of the best corners in the league when it came down to picks. Yeah. Levi, when, when it came down to clutch plays, plays that Pittsburgh needed, Levi was one of them guys. So you he's a gamer. Yeah, you might not you might not like his style and the way he played, but heck, that's why that's why he's still sitting on the Pittsburgh still a uh, roster. Because when you have when you have gamers, you might not like their style, you might not like the way they look, you might not like the attributes when it comes down to height, size, and speed. But dang, every time I drop this dude on the field. He's always coming up with a big play. Now, I might have somebody else who are taller and faster than him, but he still don't come up with the still don't come out with the plays like Levi. So obviously, when you have a guy like Levi, when he's a gamer, you just let them guys be until they stop being gamers. You don't even try to force the issue or try to make it an issue 
on why this good on why this guy should or shouldn't be starting. Levi's a gamer. Leave Levi alone. I'm just talking. I'm, I'm just talking as a coach, but yeah. obviously, Coach T know exactly what he's doing. Leave him alone. Let the man be a gamer. He's been very productive every time he step on the field. Okay. That being said, we've we've discussed uh, Patrick Peterson, who's obviously going to have a big role. We just kind of agreed that Levi Wallace is still someone who isn't going away. So we, we have to mention these young guys, especially you know Joey Porter Jr. First of all. Like, is he is he going to be ready? Will he be ready to play starter level snaps as a rookie? Or let me put it this way, maybe I if he if he is ready, why? And if if there's something that holds him up, what do you think that would be? Um, my bad. I was taking a picture. The <laughs> JP Jr. be ready when he's ready. So I don't I don't I don't know when JP is going to be ready. I can't speak for JP. Um, I'm I'm not in that position to speak on JP. Um, I, the only position I am is, you know, getting the best the getting the best guys who we think are Pittsburgh Steelers in that front office and handing them to their coaches and let them rock out. JP will be ready when JP is ready, and it's just it, how I look at it. When JP Junior is, he just grew up around it. Yeah, he know he know exactly what it is to be a Yenzer. He know exactly what it is to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. He know exactly what it looked like when we was winning playoffs. He know exactly what it feels like to win Super Bowls. He know exactly what it looked like to to be in training camp because he worked training camp along with my son. So JP going to be ready when he's ready, which I don't know. So I can't speak for JP. I will say JP got a, a up on a lot of people because he was, re- he was born in Pittsburgh. So he was born in the 412. Just so happened to get drafted by the 412. And he'd been in training camp since he was a baby in the 412. So he's a 412 Yenzer baby. So JP understands exactly what it is. When you talk about Pittsburgh Stiller tradition and what it is to be Stiller, you ain't got to tell JP none of that because he was in the house with one of the best outside linebackers that Pittsburgh produced and his and his dad, Joey Porter. So uh, he 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 knows exactly what it is. So like you like you asked me, JP gonna be ready when he's ready. Yeah, as for Corey Trice, the other guy, there there's got to be some motivation, right? When you're the seventh rounder and everybody's talking about the the fellow rookie at your position who's the second rounder, who's all those accolades that you just rattled off. Can can you relate to Trice as being an underdog type of guy who's got to be feeling like hey? Much- they're going to be talking about me by the end of this. I was once one of those guys, you yeah. know, coming playing one year from Louisiana, Lafayette, uh, no experience at corner other than 12 games my senior year. Uh, we wound up getting Brian McFadden second round and Ricardo Coakley second round. So where that put me at? Right. You talking yeah. about ex- established high-ranked corners who was coming out of high school and the college. You know, Tusculum for, for Ricardo, Florida State for, for BMAC. So – these guys coming out of, you know, four and five stars, if it was back in the day out of high school, we'll put old Ike T at, who only played for one year, fourth round draft pick, supposed to be Pittsburgh, you know, worst draft pick ever. <laughs> and it put me, it put me in that mind frame. Y'all got me effed up. That's the mind frame that put me in. And I understood the business side. If we got two second rounders back to back, I guess Ike the eye man out. So yeah. Price, Price got to look at it like that. You know, he 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 got to understand the position he's in. He's in a position right now where he can make a lot of money for himself on getting on the field. Now, how he gets on the field is the same way I got on the field at first. That's special teams. You got to be a dog at that special team. So um, that's that's one. Two is handling your business in training camp. You know, uh, even if you're getting beat, I'm always jumping in front of that line. Yeah. I'm always going as a rookie. I'm all. I'm, I always wanted Heinz, Plex, and Antoine Randall L. Give you I'm every one on one rep you can get. I'm getting every because what it does from a coach's standpoint is, man, I gotta keep telling Trice. I gotta keep telling Taylor, get his butt back. Yeah, but he wants it. So Coach T got it saying, I'd rather say whoa than sick him. If I gotta tell you to sick him, you don't want him. If I gotta pull a pull a leash back on you and say whoa, chill out. That's a good problem for us to have. If I got to tell you, go sick them, 
that's a bad problem for you, and it's not going to be a problem for us. So that's yeah. all Trice got to do. He got to have that y'all got me effed up mentality. For sure. Um, all right, Ike, just a few more things. I'll let you go. A bit more random, nothing to do with this current Steelers team, really. But uh, just curious, since since they are in camp and you're headed there, what was the best and worst part of going to Latrobe every year? Let's start with the best, because they always they always say you should uh, you should start any criticism with a compliment, right? What well, what was the the best part of going to Latrobe every year? One 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 nothing bad about Latrobe. <laughs> I mean, no 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 part of the grind that ever got I mean, old living, to you over the my, years. Nah, I walk to life. If you want to be successful in life, this is this is exactly what you're gonna have to do. What you what you're doing and what I'm doing now, grinding. So there there is no shortcuts to success. So for me, it wasn't a best or worst situation when it came down to the trope. It was, man, I was twenty some corners that got drafted in the world. Why the hell I'm gonna take this for granted? Yeah, like it's oh it's 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 over seventy one you know, thousand football players between division one, two, or three, and you're only drafting 259, but you're only drafting 20 out your position in the world. <laughs> Why the hell I'm gonna complain about, a, about what's best and what's worse? Man, I'm glad to be here. Now, since I'm here, I'm about to stay here. Now, how I'm gonna stay here, this is what I need to do to stay here. So I always looked at Latrobe like that. It won't know. I, I always looked at me getting drafted was a damn honor. Because it's thousands, it's thousands of corners who didn't get drafted, who played way more football than me at that position. So I never looked at it as a bad thing. I always looked at it as good and an opportunity. Fair enough. All right, another guy you mentioned earlier in this pod briefly, um, Heinz Ward. Why do you think Heinz hasn't gotten a chance to be an NFL position coach? People, fan, you know, fans ask me that out of the blue all the time. Like, why is Heinz either – not coaching here. Why isn't he coaching somewhere? Why is he, you know, in the XFL right now? Yeah, I mean, he's the head coach for the XFL. So obviously, yeah. he didn't coach. He didn't coach. He didn't coach in the league. So yeah, he was an offensive coach. assistant yeah. for the Jets a couple years. But I'm just surprised yeah. that he hasn't gotten that, you know, bigger opportunity. Time, timing is everything, bro. Like you, you can't push time. You know, so his time right now is being the head coach for the XFL. Not too many people say they can be a head coach. Period. He's a head coach for the XFL, and he had the interview and had and have enough on his resume for them to give the nod. So his time coming, bro, it, it's coming. And his story, everybody's story, and what people think it should be. You know, God always got a plan for you, and it might not be the plan what everybody think your plan is. And sometimes it might not be the plan what you think your plan should be. But I got a plan for you. So Hines got God got a story for Hines and his plan on what he think and where he should be, and what time he should be, though. So right now, he's just building his resume. So if you ask, because I know a few of the guys who who I train are with Hines for the XFL, mm -hmm. and you know, not only do they love him as a coach, you know, they love him as a person, because he's teaching them how to be men off the field. So everything happened for a reason. Yeah, we'll see. All right, lastly, Ike, uh, we talked a lot about Joey Porter Jr., Steelers drafted – him this year, they drafted Cam's brother, Connor Hayward, last year. A couple legacy guys with great bloodlines who've built for this, been privy to NFL life since they were kids. Should we just go ahead and pencil in your son, Ivan Taylor, to the Steelers in the 2028 or 2029 draft or what, man? It feels like it's just preordained. Man, God got a plan, man. I don't even <laughs> want to speak on it right now. I, I just We just got back from Notre Dame. I just landed from South Bend. So we've been doing – we've been hitting all these tools with these colleges – and, um, man, I just, you know, I'm just being, I'm, one, I'm a proud dad, two, yeah. I'm just being very supportive on his decision making on whatever he won't do. So, um, he, he, like I tell, like I told him, man, I said, man, you just make being a dad easy. You know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, 3.8, 3.9 GPA. He just so happened to be a superior athlete who's highly recruited by a lot of power five, power five colleges. So, um, and he's he's as humble and as hardworking as anybody I know. So, man, I, I'm just uh, I don't even want to look that far. He got goals and he knows exactly yeah. what he want to be and how long it's going to take him. And I'm just here to support every move he makes. That's it's all, just cool because if I would have done this, if I would have done this with Joey Porter Senior five years ago, say he would have been saying the same thing. He said that's way too far in the future, way one day at a time. But that's how life works, I guess. Yes, sir. 
Awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much, Ike. I will. Uh, I'll say what's up to you when I see you out in Latrobe. Yes, I'll, I'll be right, there man. tomorrow as well. Um, this was great. Uh, happy to have you on anytime. All right, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, B. Enjoy. Yep. Safe drive, man. All right. Thank you. Bro. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports.